Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have my June Reset and my Queer Lit Readathon TBR. So I'm combining them both together because that's basically what the reset video is. So I've been doing these now for most months of the year where I sort of wrap up what happened last month and I reset my reading where I have the books that I will probably be reading. So it's a very loose TBR. And because the Queer Lit Readathon is happening in the whole month of June and June is Pride Month, a lot of the things that I've tried to pull out have been queer titles. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get to my TBR. I am filming this video on Saturday, May 27th. So this is my stats so far for May. I have read 38 books. Three of those have been rereads and two of those rereads were audio rereads. And there was a third audio book as well that I read, which I'll be talking about hopefully in the next month or so. Another thing that I have been including in my resets is did I read my TBR? So did I read the books that I said I was going to read last month? And I didn't read everything, but I did read quite a few. So the ones that I did read, I read Happy Place by Emily Henry. I read The Sinister Booksellers of Bath by Garth Nix. I read The Isle of the Gods by Amy Kaufman. I read We Could Be Something by Will Kostakis. Those were all review copies that I had received over the last couple of months. I read Sweep With Me by Lona Andrews. I read the first seven books in the Criminal Intention series by Cole McCaid. And I am going to probably try and continue finishing off season two of that series in June. I did read the rest of the Stickside series by Amy Aislinn. So there was five books that I had to read for that. And that was my spinner wheel pick. So I have been trying to read through the authors that I visited at Rare because I did come back with a lot of books. So I managed to get through a whole chunk of those. I also read Zadie Ma and the Dog Who Chased the Moon by Gabrielle Wang, which was my middle grade pick. In terms of favorite books of the month, I didn't really have any misses this month, which was great. I don't think I DNF'd anything. Sort of my three top books from May so far have been Like a Hurricane, which is a gorgeous middle grade verse novel and is about a kid coming out as queer to his parents and the feelings and the emotions that lead up to that moment. It is absolutely beautiful. I also really liked The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren, which I got an early review copy of, and I just loved how easy the story was to read. And that sounds really terrible, but sometimes you just need those books where you know exactly what you're gonna get. And this was the story of a romance author who ends up being the star of a reality dating TV show that is produced by a guy who normally produces marine documentaries. And the two are total opposites who end up falling for one another. He is a single dad. She is a little bit of a hot mess because she's made a couple of realizations about her life and she's not quite sure wh what she's doing anymore. And together they just form this amazing relationship while trying to find her, her perfect guy on a dating show. And it was just lovely. And I said to a few people, I hate reality TV shows in all their forms. I don't watch them. I just, I don't like them, but I will read the hell out of them in a romance book and have a really great time doing it. And then a really surprising one for me, because this was a book that I just sort of requested randomly on NetGalley because it was a hockey romance. And that was Time to Shine by Rachel Reed. This is an MM hockey romance. It is a beautiful sort of friends to lovers story. It is very low angst in terms of their relationship. It is an AHL player who's called up to the NHL and temporarily, and he ends up falling for one of his teammates. It features bisexual representation and demisexual representation. It was really well done. There are some content warnings in here for characters who are dealing with prolonged grief of the loss of a loved one that has impacted on their family dynamics, but the whole book is just absolutely beautiful. So that's sort of the wrap up portion of my reset. And now we're sort of getting into my priority reads and the things that I've got my eye on and then sort of the rest of my TBR sort of goodness. I currently only have one buddy read listed, but I suspect it will go up to two because Alexis Hall's Mortal Follies comes out in June and I suspect Brie and I will probably read that together. So that is possibly a buddy read that's happening, but I am also reading Sweet of the Heart by Lona Andrews, which is the most recent book in the Innkeeper Chronicles, and this will bring our Innkeeper Chronicles read along up to date. The live show for this won't be until the 30th of June. It is much chunkier than all of the other books in the series, but I'm very excited to read this one. I also have a review copy of Some Shall Break by Ellie Marnie, which is a young adult thriller story, and I am so excited. I love Ellie Marnie's young adult books. She's an Australian writer. This is a young group of FBI agents who are trying to solve serial crimes by enlisting the help of a serial killer. And I also received an early copy of E-Boy Volume 5, Superhuman Army by Ando. So thank you to Ellen Unwin for both of these. This is a middle fiction serial story. So I will get to this. I think it is coming out on the 6th of June. Oops, no, this is coming out on the 30th of May. So I better read this really soon. So speaking of those June new releases. So I did mention Mortal Follies, which is coming out on the 6th of June. Also on the 6th of June is Some Shall Break. And there is also an anthology Pride Not Prejudice, which I believe is 
queer anthology, which I've got my eye on, so that will be great for Pride Month. On the 7th, Double Pucked by Lauren Blakely comes out. This is one that I just stumbled across while I was hunting for hockey romance books and sounds really intriguing, so I'm going to keep an eye on that. I don't know if I'll get to it next month, but it's definitely on my radar. On the 13th, Magic Claims by Lona Andrews comes out. Heather, Megan and I will probably read it and then talk about it close to its release date, so stay tuned. There'll probably be another live show announced at some point. I think on the 20th Century with Kings by Catherine Moon comes out. This is the third book in the series that she has been writing that are all why choose monster romances. I enjoyed the first one, loved the second one, and am intrigued by the third one. And then on the 30th, the Queer and Cute anthology also comes out. I think Emily Rath is in this one. Someone's in this one that I happen to notice. So there's a lot of anthologies coming out. A lot of them are queer ones and I'm very excited. Which brings me to my Queer Lit Readathon TBR. So the Queer Lit Readathon is hosted by Kathy Rogan and this month they also have Rachel as a co-host and it celebrates all things queer books and when the full readathon takes place there is a bingo board which I'll pop here on the screen. I was watching a few of the hosts videos talking about their TBRs and I did say I'm going to try and cover a lot of these prompts but I'm going to try and cover them with books that I already own. So I have gone through my Kindle, I have gone through my physical TBR to see what queer stories I have and I've tried to fit them within those prompts. I will also at the end go through some other queer titles that I have that I'm going to throw into the basket just in case I have time because why not? I mean let's be clear I like to have options. For the first challenge which is to read a banned book I'm going to read one of the group book picks for the readathon which is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. I've actually had this for a while and I need to read it so perfect opportunity. The group reads are All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson and also Finna by Nino Cipri. So I do have a copy of that and I think this one is novella length and it's like a weird Ikea store story for memory. For the prompt trans joy I have Magical Boy by Tae Cow, which I think is a graphic novel. For choose your own category I am going to read Rookie Mistake by Anna Zabo and L.A. Witt. This is a queer hockey romance. For M Spec, I'm going to read Love Kills Twice by Rianne Gray. I have heard mixed reviews about this from people who have read it, but I own it, so I'm going to try and read it and see where I fall on it. I don't have a book picked yet for history. I'm going to sort of see how I go through the month. I didn't have anything that I already owned, so I'm going to see if I can find something through my local library if I have time. For the host rec, I'm going to read Icebreaker by A.L. Graziati. I can't remember who recommended it, but it was on the recommendations list. It is a young adult MM hockey romance. I'm continuing my hockey romance trend. Anywhere I can fit these books in, I'm fitting them in. For the memoir prompt, I'm also going to use All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson because it fits. For an NB author or main character, I am going to read Nimona by N.D. Stevenson. For an intersectional story, I'm going to read That Could Be Enough by Alyssa Cole. I haven't read Alyssa Cole in ages, so again, perfect opportunity. For the folklore prompt, I'm going to read In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Clune. I might be stretching this slightly, but this is a Pinocchio-ish retelling, so I'm going to fit it here because it's the closest book that I owned that fit that prompt. I also have an audiobook for that, so I'm excited. For the prompt continued, I'm going to read Something Wild and Wonderful by Anita Kelly. I'm just continuing reading books by Anita Kelly because their books are fantastic. I have loved everything that I've read by them, and I have been doing my thing where I have an anticipated book that I really want to read but I keep putting it off. So I'm going to read it this month. For the prompt short stories I have an anthology already on my Kindle called Love is All which is a collection of queer stories so I'm going to try and read that. For the prompt sapphic I'm going to read Mistakes Were Made by Meryl Wilsner. Onto the TBR it goes. I haven't picked a book for queer friends yet because I suspect that a lot of these books that I have already selected will have queer friendship in them and I will also be picking up plenty of other stories so I'm sure something will fit this prompt. In terms of other queer titles that I own already there's a stack on my kindle but I also pulled out some of the physical books so I could throw them in my basket so I had options. I have two Louisa Master stories there is Conspiracy of Dragons which would bring me up to date with with her Dragon Paranormal Romance series and also Asha which is her most recent release and I love this cover so much. So both of these I picked up at Rare and I would really like to catch up on my Louisa Masters books. I also have The Husband Hoax by Saxon James, which I've been meaning to read because this connects to one of the most recent Puck Boys books that I've read. I've pulled out the rest of the Red Dirt Heart books by N.R. Walker, which I would like to finish off this series, and this could give me another series to read alongside Criminal Intentions. Can you tell I'm being ambitious this month? Historically, this has not gone well for me, but you know, we're, we're already in it, so we're just gonna keep going. I also have Whiskey and Sin by Emily Rath, which is her MM Omegaverse story. I think. And we all know how much I love Emily Rath. So I'm just continuing. Like I have this book and one other book and then I'm fully caught up on her backlist and I'm not okay with that. Things that I'm not going to pull off the trolley just because I think I'll run out of room in the basket. I have Tal Bowers, Executive Office Series. 
I have a couple of Alexis Hall books. What else do I have? Oh, I know what I was going to pull off. I have Law by Lily Mayne, which I need to catch up on that series. So the one thing I would like to find though, and I might just do this throughout the month, is a few more queer middle grade titles. I've got a few lists and things that I want to go through and see what I can get from my local library. So they may feature in wrap ups throughout the month. This isn't ambitious of me at all. Okay, so that is my TBR basket for the month. As usual, I will include some extra footage at the end of this video. I've got footage of scanning in my library, things from the month. I will have setting up my filming schedule for June, and I will also have some journaling stuff for you at the end. So use all the timestamps to jump around. I know it's nothing new. It's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight
thanks for joining me on my reset this month. It's uh, June is going to be a little bit chaotic, but we're going to try and just embrace the chaos and see what I read. You know, sometimes we just have to aim high and see where we land. In the comments, I'd love to know if you are participating in the in the comments, I would love to know if you are participating in the Queer Lit Readathon and what you're excited to read for it. Otherwise, feel free to share anything that you're excited about reading in the coming month. If you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a tree emoji down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone.